What's up there SEO pros? Welcome back. Today I'm going to be sharing with you how to do a $800 SEO audit for completely free. Now this is with a template that I've created called the SEO Pro template and I will share that template with you right now. It's on the website. All you have to do is go to chasehunter.com. You go to the resources tab and under there you'll find the free SEO template. This is the fourth audit that I've done this month now, which has been $800. And most of the people who do these audits, I do the audits for, will actually end up buying a service from me, SEO implementations, for about $2,000 to $3,000. Now, if you want to learn how to do this, it's pretty simple. Um, you can watch this tutorial, follow along. I'm going to be showing you the free way to do it. A lot of you ask me all the time, you know, what if I don't have these tools, Chase, what do I do? And if you don't have the tools, all you have to do is follow this tutorial. I'll show you guys how to do it. So uh, yeah, it's not necessary to, to use tools if you if you have to use them, um, or sorry, if you if you don't have the money and you really want to use them, you don't have to. This is how I started out by not using tools at all. Um, the one tool that you will want though is this SEO template. Um, if you want to end up taking your game to a next step, by the way, though, um, and you guys do have a little bit of money to invest, you can go to the SEO Pro bundle. It includes the paid version of this template, which has all the tutorials, shows you how to do it. Um, if you just click into each of these tabs, you'll actually see a tutorial for each thing showing you how to do it. Uh, same thing for the phase two, the phase three, but um, you also get all the courses I have. You get live classes, tons of cool stuff. So all you have to do is just go to the SEO Pro bundle. Um, <clears throat> And check it out, 697 bucks right now for uh, while we're still in this corona thing. Normally it's a couple grand. But anyways, um, these are also live streams. So all of you who are um, watching the replay of this, if you're not in the live, I would encourage you to press the little subscribe button right around wherever this is, wherever this area is. And press the bell icon so you actually can get notified when I do go live so that you can uh, join and ask questions. Um, and welcome everybody in chat right now. Welcome Wayne, welcome Fizz. Uh, let me put my face down so you guys can see the chat. Uh, welcome Pete. We got Lucas, we got uh, Garnett. I don't know how to say everybody's names, but uh, either way, welcome everybody. Thank you for being here and I appreciate you all for uh, for being here. So. All right, so uh, a couple things you're gonna need before we start. You're gonna need the access to your Google Analytics or to your client's Google Analytics, uh, Google Search Console. If they don't have any of these things, um, Google Search Console is actually easy to set up. They didn't actually send me access to this, but if you have analytics, you can just um, go to add property, put the URL in, and what happens is if you already have the analytics, it will pull all the data for Search Console. And you're gonna need the spreadsheet open. I just duplicate the spreadsheet of the paid version and I then um, I delete a couple tabs because obviously I don't need to know the tutorials. I already know how to make, how to do the tab or how to do the template. Now when you get the client, once you sell them, you're just gonna copy and paste these questions over to them. Um, obviously you're gonna change your email here for when they grant you access. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to grab all the answers. I have them all right here. I'm gonna copy them and I'm gonna just delete these previous questions and paste them in. Let me get a couple extra rows because it probably will be a little bit more since we spaced it out differently. There it is. And we got all the questions answered. Looks like they didn't answer question 10. Oh, they did. I just didn't grab it in there. Okay, let me do a couple more down and we'll be good to go. So let me read off the audit. Um, so the way this works, by the way, people don't generally just pay for an audit through my site. Some people do. Um, Sometimes I'll just see people go to the services, paid SEO audit service, and they'll buy an audit for 800 bucks. But generally what people will do is they'll call me and they'll say, hey Chase, you know, I need some help with my website, SEO, blah, blah, blah. And generally what I'll do is I'll ask a lot of questions. I'll say, you know, uh, usually out of here, you can actually use this as a script. Um, you can ask them, let me go back to here. Um, you can ask them, you know, what their goal is. Uh, let me actually get to uh, this one. So what you can do is you can say, you know, what is your current goal with the website? Do you have a content or SEO budget? Do you have access to Google Analytics? Have you built citations? What previous work has been done on the website? Blah, blah, blah. Just ask as many questions as you can. You want to qualify as much as possible and you really want to build a relationship with people. So one of the big things I always talk about when it comes to selling is you really want to uh, not just worry about the sale, but actually worry about, you know, what 
do these people actually do? Um, you know, why is their business special? Why are they in this business? Why, you know, what makes them get up in the morning? You want to you want to be able to really qualify people by connecting with them on a personal level as well as a business level. That's the best way to sell. So basically, that's how my calls go. If you guys ever want to hear any of my calls, I have some videos in my previous videos that actually show you what I say when I'm on my calls, so you can actually hear that live. But anyways, um, let's go through the questions and we'll get right into the audit. So first question was. Uh, what is your current goal with the website? So my belief is that uh, a website is the first thing checked after a personal meeting, referral, and obviously a Google search. I feel um, it should easily portray what we do in a professional way. I think it should be somewhat diverse in content as well as having uh, the general easy to look at list. Got it. So they're happy about the audit basically is what that means. Um, for example, we say we do Cisco. Uh, Cisco has routers, switches, and firewalls on that offering to have a page mentioning the high level of the, all those things. Although then break out to a page on just the router, just the switch, etc. My reason for that is uh, someone may just be searching for switch help. Okay. So uh, next question is, do we have analytics or any logins? Um, and all I needed was just access to analytics. I don't need access to logins or anything for WordPress or anything. Um, question uh, over here was, have you built citations? They said somewhat, although not really. Um, what previous website uh, work has been done on the website? We have a we have found a guy who does a pretty good job with our WordPress theme. Has a great eye for a layout. Uh, I don't know what he is that he is a content or SEO person. That said, he makes graphics, ads, pages, creates themes, etc. Um, do you have a social media strategy? No strategy, but daily post on, posting on LinkedIn and Facebook. Okay. Uh, WordPress it, with the Genesis theme is the theme they're using in the CMS. They're using Bluehost with a dedicated server. Okay. Um, I asked if they had Google Business. They said yes. Sorry, Google My Business, but I don't need access to it. And then what are you expecting after the audit? They say, I expect that we may have a lot of. Uh, technical issues with the website as well as create some of some more content. I think we should have a better approach to Google AdWords where we can target them more effectively. All right, so I can't really advise them too much on Google AdWords. I'm not really an expert there, but I work with people who are, so that could be something that we put in there as well. But the reason why I put all this in here is just so we have it for record. Um, it's very important that when you work with people that you have an expectation that you deliver based on the expectation that they have. Cool. So if you guys are all ready, let's get right into it. Um, we're going to delete the resources tab because a lot of this stuff we're not going to be using today. Uh, that's more for the implementations. All right, cool. So Google Analytics, we got that set up. Now, the way this uh, template works is you just press X or Z. If it's X, it's good. If it's Z, it's bad. And it gives you a color coding based on that. So we got Google Analytics. We got Google Search Console. We don't have Bing Search Console. We uh, have Screaming Frog. And by the way, for this tutorial, you can use the free version of Screaming Frog. So all you do is go to screamingfrog.com or screamingfrog.co.uk. You're going to download the free version. It goes up to 500 URLs. Now, most of you guys are not going to be working with above 500 URL websites. They're going to be working with like local websites. So you can use this tool like this, SEO is better tool, download, and you'll get the free 500 URLs. And I will not be using the analytics and search console integration, which you normally need if you're gonna be doing the phase two stuff. I'm gonna show you guys how to do it, uh, the phase two stuff with just Screaming Frog, the free version. So you're gonna grab the URL, we're gonna grab it here. We're gonna open up our Screaming Frog. What's up, Colin? What's up, Steven? What's up, Laura from Atlanta? We're going to plug the URL in, press start. So while that's going, let's go back to the audit. So we got Screaming Frog. Um, I'm taking Ahrefs out because I don't use it anymore. Um, we don't have many chats set up. We we'll might set that up later. Um, Integromat, this kind, of, this kind of stuff's a little bit more deprecated because I haven't been using it as much. All right, let's see if the site redirects the preferred version. So all you have to do for this is take out the different versions like this, WW, see if it redirects back to the WW. And looks like we're getting a little bit of a slow load time on this. What's up, Gustavo? And we got, we got it to redirect back. Okay, now let's take out the S, just do HTTP. 
and it should redirect us back to the SSL version. There it is, and then all we have to do is one more, do the HTTP without the WW, and if they all redirect back to the WW, then we know we're good. Okay, so all the redirects happen perfectly fine. Okay, we'll put an X there. Next thing we'll look at is if the SSL certificate's properly installed. Looks like the connection is secure. I'm happy with that. We'll put an X. All right, so page speed. In order to check page speed, I use GT metrics, and I can also look at Google PageSpeed Insights just to kind of cross check. And we'll just plug our websites into these two tools. What's up, Chef Pancake? Uh, Talk3 Design says, do you get most of your clients from your website? If so, do you have a funnel set up? So I can show you my analytics. Most of my clients come from all over. So I have uh, traffic from YouTube. I have traffic from Google. I have traffic from Facebook. I try to diversify my traffic sources as much as possible so that I don't you know, worry as much about getting a hit by an update or basically the more you can kind of get different streams of you know not only income but different traffic sources the better you're going to do long term in a bunch of different ways so I usually try to go for two to three main sources of traffic so you can see here um, Google organic 621 YouTube referral 512 and this is the, just the last seven days direct traffic 413 Facebook 812 um, but yeah mainly mainly Google YouTube and Facebook are the three I choose to go for. Okay, so <clears throat> going back to this, we got uh, GT metrics of a 22 second load time. Oh my God, that's insane. So we're not happy about that. And then page speed insights, it's about the same speed index 22.3. So uh, just to give you guys a refresher, one of our recent clients that spent about $2,800 um, this month actually, uh, ClicksGeek, they just they had about that they had about the same problem. And I will show you what happened to their traffic. It's actually pretty crazy. Um, I made one suggestion. I said, look, fix the page speed. We'll do some of the basic, uh, we'll, we'll switch our hosting. Um, we'll do some of the basic SEO. And what happened was pretty unreal. They wound up getting a, I think it was like a 100% increase in conversions and traffic uh, really, really quickly just by doing those changes because that's how big page speed actually is to Google so we'll compare these two and check it out we got a boost in organic traffic about a hundred and five percent and that's just in one month that's how fast it picked up and in Google we had a hundred and seventy four percent increase in goal completions and a thirty four percent increase in conversion rate uh, the bounce rate went down by 4%. It should be actually more, but usually when you get more traffic, the bounce rates will go up. So every single metric's in green. <laughs> really crazy. Goal value went up by 100%. So 728 leads versus 1,500. That's how important it is. So one audit could literally, one suggestion could really just like make the whole $2,800 back for you. Uh, already, ClicksGeek is super happy with the results, and we're not even done with the SEO yet. Okay, so we're gonna say page speed is not faster than two seconds. It's uh, 22 seconds actually, we'll put that in our notes. We got, Google Analytics does exist. We got it on the site. Let's make sure there's not duplicate copies. We wanna make sure we don't have, you know, two different analytics loading and messing up with her, messing up our analytics. So we got one there. We might have another there. Not really sure. It looks like we have extra. So anytime you have extra analytics going, first of all, the site's gonna load slower, but second of all, it can affect your actual tracking. So we wanna um, make a suggestion in our template here and say, look, uh, we got Google Analytics that it does exist, but we also have multiple analytics codes on site. Okay, two call to actions, one paid and one free. Now what this means is that we wanna see two different call to actions that are going to uh, generate a, a, a uh, somebody on an email list or a Facebook subscriber or a YouTube subscriber, whatever it is. And we want a paid service. So here you can see we have free consultation and view services. These are both paid. 
which means that if, some, if, if you're going to be giving something away, let's say you have two call to actions, and let's say you're giving away a free consultation, that's still uh, you're still doing that for the purpose of making money. You should have one call to action that has absolutely no purpose of making money that you can bring people in and build a relationship with them, and then you should have one that is a paid uh, version that's just straight for selling, which is generally the free consultation. Uh, anytime somebody's, you're giving a free consultation, it's still kind of paid because the goal is to make money with it. So it looks like we have two here. We have view services and free consultation. We should have free consultation and download our checklist or grab our whatever, our results. Uh, send us a message on Facebook. I don't know. Whatever it is to get people to opt in and you want to have a high opt-in rate. So we got our different services here. General services, AWS, migration, ransomware, protection, on-site service, blah, blah, blah. We got our support packages, our testimonials are about us. We got our contact, we got a bunch of content here. We got a request to call, but for the most part, I'm not seeing any free sort of offer besides the free consultation, which again, we should have some sort of like sign up for a, I don't know, sign up for our free software or grab our, so a good example of this is like on my website, big thing that I'm doing here is I'm either offering people an SEO audit or I'm offering them an SEO template. So the template's free. It's way that they can get something for high value for not, without paying anything. And then the bundle is paid. So I always offer a free and a paid. Even in all my videos, in everything that I do, I have a free and a paid option. So people can either say, hey, I don't have the money net right now or I don't really know Chase, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this free offer. Or I'm gonna buy from him because I've been seeing his stuff around. I think it's time for me to buy. Those are the two different options. Because remarketing is very, 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 very important for SEO. And so is building relationships so that you can build engagement. The more people I get liking my videos, interacting, so on and so on, the better I do. And by the way, leave a like if you haven't done it already on this video. I would appreciate that very much. I will take a pause so you guys can all go like it right now. Okay, pause is up. Let's do it. So going back to here, we don't have the free call to actions. So one other thing that we can do, and this is part of the free version of the of the temp of the audit, all you have to do is go to behavior, site content, landing pages. This is going to show you the highest traffic pages on the website. Thanks for leaving a like, Chill Consulting, and everybody else who did that. So all you go got to do is you go to site content landing pages, and this is all the highest traffic pages. Now, if you want to see if the most important pages have call to actions, which they should, they should generally be above the fold, meaning people don't have to scroll to see the offer. What we'll see is no call to actions. We have a sort of a link, but you usually want to have a button, some sort of offer. So right here we got business email access anywhere on any device. You can have a little video, say, you know, say, hey, see how this works right now. Send this to your inbox. Download. But you need to capture and retain your traffic because 90% of your traffic, 95% of your traffic, really, even more sometimes is not going to buy from you. They're going to go to your site, they're going to get the information, they're going to leave, they're never going to see you again. So you want to capture traffic as much as possible. If you don't capture traffic and continue getting people back, you're not going to do well. Brian Fultz just made a payment of $100 for the SEO Pro bundle. Now you only got to make another $600 payment and you'll be in. <laughs> I don't know why, but people see the other option um, and they so they'll just put in any other price on the bundle. There is another option I will show you. It says other. This is for people that have already purchased from me in the past and they asked me for a discount. This, if you've never bought from me before and you just put in a random amount, I'm not going to give you access. Some people will literally put in a dollar. I've seen somebody put in 10 cents before and uh, yeah, it just doesn't work that way. But I do appreciate the effort. All right, so going back, we got our... Uh, Robots.txt exists, so let's go in and see what the robots.txt looks like. We'll go uh, forward slash robots.txt. So we got the sitemap in there. Good. Let's go check out the sitemap. This is generally all you really want to see is you want to make sure there's a sitemap in there and we're not de-indexing anything we're not supposed to. And this sitemap doesn't look like it's loading at all. So we're going to go ahead and say that the sitemap doesn't work, but the robots.txt exists, and the XML sitemap exists, but it just doesn't load. So I think we have a lot of um, 
timeout errors going on. And we can actually confirm that really quickly if we go to Screaming Frog, go to HTML, and here we go. We got all of the different issues. Now, if we scroll down, we can see there's some 400 codes, and generally the 400 codes are probably going to be not found. So these are all things that are related to like timeout, server errors, that kind of thing. So uh, a lot of issues here. Good thing we have a page speed guy. Now, just to let you guys know, by the way, a lot of you have been asking me, go, Chase, how do I get um, your page speed guy? And the, the truth is the page speed guy actually works for me. So if you want page speed optimization, it's about 249 for a website. We get your load times to go from, uh, you know, what? 10 or 20 seconds down to, let's see what we got for uh, Ed for ClicksGeek. So ClicksGeek had a, sim a similar load time to this. It was 22 seconds. Now, if we look at his site, I believe it's like three seconds. I mean, there's at, at a certain point, if you still want your bells and whistles, it's still gonna be maybe a second extra more than you would want. But going from a 20 second load time down to a three second is like freaking unreal. So if you guys have, a, uh, if you look at some of our other sites though, he'll actually, the PHP guy will actually bring this stuff down to a 0 0.7. So this was at a 40 second load time before the guy came in. <laughs> and now it's at a three. So if you guys need help with your page speed, um, this is where you're gonna get help with it on this page. Um, the reason why I'm not giving out his information is because he works for me, that's why. So a lot of people are like, hey Chase, let me get his information. It's like, okay, well yeah, but uh, if you want the help, you gotta go through me. And just a couple other things, oh, I'll talk about this later, but we got some new services going on that I've been doing. All right, so uh, going into here, so we got XML sitemap submitted to Search Console. Let's go see if Search Console picked it up. So we'll go to uh, Legacy, sorry, sorry. We're gonna go to, we're trying to find Search Console. Where is it? Uh, we're trying to find sitemaps. There they are, sitemaps under index. So no sitemap has been submitted. And I'm not gonna submit it yet until we actually have it set up uh, correctly for it to load. Otherwise it's gonna give us errors. XML sitemap included in robust.txt, yes. HTML sitemap created, let's actually see. So we'll do dot HTML. Oops, what am I doing? It's sorry, sitemap.html forward slash sitemap.html. And we do have an HTML sitemap, so that's cool. So we'll X that out. It's not in the footer, I don't believe. Let's go see the footer. This is just for UX purposes, by the way. Not seeing it. All right, website submitted to Search Console. Yes, it is now. I just fixed that. Content budget exists. Uh, we don't really know what the content budget is. So we need to ask about that. Website is easy to edit. Yes, because it's on WordPress, and usually that's pretty easy to edit. Um, keywords and anchors map properly in phase two. All right, so let's go look at the. Uh, Let's go look at the phase two. And obviously we haven't done the phase two yet, so there's no keywords mapped yet. Basically keywords mapped means that we're looking to see what keywords we wanna rank for for each page. And then we've tied the analytics around that and see how those pages are performing for those keywords. Internal links pointing to the main uh, to the home page on main pages. Now this is what I was actually trying to look at. That's why I got a little bit confused for a second. If we go look at the main pages, just click into them. Boom, boom, boom. We're looking for some internal links hopefully back to the home page or some of the main pages. We got some internal links, um, but mainly just the contact pages and the cell pages. So we're not really passing a lot of value. All right, all footer and header links work. Um, let's see. Uh, there was a tool that I had that just let me see all the links, but um, one of the ways you can just click in all of these I usually just check the footer because the, the menu links are usually not going to be not working or are going to be working. So it looks like all the links work pretty much. Not too worried about it. Um, I'm not really seeing any 404s in here either, I don't think. We got some 301s, but oh, some 404s, but these are just plugins and stuff. Um, so yeah, most of the links on here are working that I can see. Cool. Okay, is so the website sandbox? I don't believe so. The way we check is we just do site colon name of website and it'll show us if it's sandboxed. Meaning is it indexed or not yet? 
And it looks like all the pages are pretty much indexed, so we're good there. About page exists, contact page exists. Let's go check. So we got about, and we got a contact. Now the contact should be linked in the in here somewhere. I don't I don't see it is. We have it actually in the button, so I guess that's good enough. Unsec uh, contact page exists. Unsecured content. I don't I didn't see any, so we can just go to our screaming frog crawl. Go through here. Um, there's actually a tab that's called protocol. And oh, HTTP looks like these are just outbound links or something. Let's actually click into this and see that actually all the old HTTP content now redirects, so we're good there. Favicon does exist, it's that little gray, gray bubble. Terms of service and privacy policy, let's go check. Uh, let's see if there's a privacy. There it is. It's usually a two in one. Automated chat funnels, no. Customer data extraction, no. We're gonna take that out for now. All right, let's see what they're indexing. So all we gotta do um, to do indexing, it's pretty easy. You're just gonna do uh, site colon name of website, and then you're gonna take the uh, different words in here, and you're gonna see if they're indexed. So we're gonna first of all see if the thank you page is indexed, or if there's any thank you pages. So we'll just type in thank you. We don't have a thank you page, doesn't look like, so we're good there. PDFs, let's type in PDF. No PDFs index, so we're good there. Dates, let's see if we got like a 2019, so we'll just do forward slash 2019. And let me see this page. No, the URLs are really long. We need to make a suggestion on that. But it looks like the dates are just in the copy, but we don't have the actual in the URL. So it's fine if we have it in the copy like right here. We just don't want to see it in the URLs unless it's a news website. Authors, we're going to go do the same thing. We're going to do uh, site colon, name of website, and then we're going to do author. And looks, we're, we are indexing authors. So we don't want that. Um, one thing that you want to check before you actually de-index authors or anything really is go to over here in search console and go by query, type in author, and sorry, actually by page. And you just wanna make sure that there's no pages showing up for the keywords author. Um, Cause then, you know, if people are finding these pages and they're valuable to them, you don't wanna de-index them, but it doesn't look like they are. <clears throat> so we'll de-index those. Post tags, we'll do the same thing. Site, colon, name of website, type in tag. We are indexing tags, we wanna get rid of those. Product tags, I don't think we are because we don't really have any products, just services. Uh, WP directory, so you just type in uh, forward slash WP. Uh, doesn't look like it, just images showing up. Account pages, so you would just type in account. Nope, good there. Media attachments, so all you have to do for that is just to see if in images are indexed um, as single pages. You just do .jpeg or .img or .gif and looks like none of this is showing up, so we're good. Category pages, all we have to do is do forward slash category and looks like we are indexing categories. Let's go see if any of these categories have any traffic, so we'll just do um, we're gonna look for pages containing category. And none of them are ranking for anything really. This one has like a thousand impressions, but let's see what keywords are actually showing up for it. Infrastructure optimization, average position 50. I'm assuming it's just jumping all around. So probably not a whole lot of value here. Not really worth keeping unless there was really some traffic to it. Thin content or no value pages. So we wanna look in Screaming Frog and see how many pages we have in here that don't have a lot of content in them. So we can actually go to the sidebar, I believe, and see <coughs> content related issues. Um, so we got structured data, site maps, page speed. We wanna kind of find anything that has to do with uh, words, word count. And I think, here we go, meta description, page titles, URL. There's a couple ways to do this, but I just wanted to show you guys this way. Looks like we're not seeing it. So the other way to do it is just go um, look at all of your URLs uh, by looking at internal. And then you're gonna look at HTML and you're gonna scroll over and you're gonna look for all the pages that have 
low word counts. So if we scroll over, we should be able to find word count. Here it is. And generally, most of your main pages should have above 500 words per page. So if we scroll over, um, we'll see anything below this is going to have less than 500 words. So if we look at all these other things, we can. So all of these are below 500, even the contact. Um, a lot of these are 301 pages, though 404 so they're not too worrisome. The team pages, a lot of these pages we're going to be de-indexing. Services page, we're going to want to do more content on. But a lot of our big pages, it looks like um, looks like we're doing okay on. So uh, not a lot of thin content. There will there will be a lot less after we de-index everything, and we want to see if we're if they're using a deprecated tag called meta keywords. And it looks like they're not. Uh, by the way, how are, how are you guys doing in chat right now? You, is everything making sense so far? Give me some ones in chat if you guys are feeling okay about this audit so far. Again, I haven't done any paid tools. So you're not have, you don't have to pay anything so far to do this. You get the template for free. You get the information for free. You get the process for free. You get the video for free. What else do you guys want for free? Don't tell me because I probably... I can't give much more for free. Eric says, yeah. Uh, Eduardo says, everything's good. Graham says, yeah. Romaine, thank you guys. Thank you all for the comments in chat. Is it an $800 audit, right? Yes. So this was an $800 audit. I just had another $800 come in today for another audit. I get a bunch of $800 uh, audits all the time. Um, so... The, the way I do it is by using this template and um, just being good at doing the audit process because a lot of people want help with this stuff. Uh, yeah, Screaming Frog is not free. Yes, it is. This, up to 500 URLs, it's free. So you can, all of the things that we've done so far, look, there's only 500 URLs exactly on this website. Um, and if you're only crawling by HTML, it's actually only 300. So um, this is actually a, basically a free crawl. Do you audit sites that don't have WordPress? Yeah, I audit pretty much. You don't. You can audit anything with this. You can audit local sites. You can audit national sites. You can audit anything you want. All right, so let's check out the URL structure. So all we have to do for that is go into the actual pages, or we can actually go into Screaming Frog and see what the URLs look like. All right, let's start with the. Actually, let's go to. Um, let's go into Analytics just so we can see the highest traffic pages. So we'll filter by the lot the five thousand pages, and. Here we go. We got a home page. We got long URLs. These are way too long. And you can see there's like version two. Um, we got like some PHP pages. It looks like. Let me go look at this. So this almost looks like uh, the home page, but it, there's other. I don't know where this is getting pulled from, but it looks like this is indexable when it shouldn't be. So if we view the source and we see index, it looks like. It's completely indexed. I don't know what that's about. It looks like it's could be some sort of click that people are doing, um, or maybe just some sort of internal link with. So there's a lot of you can see here. There's just a lot of long URLs. There's a ton of uh, pages that have like dash two on them. Uh, this is really all that's in Google Analytics that we're getting traffic for. So there's not a whole lot here. If we go to all pages, we can see all the rest of them. This is just the pages that are getting traffic. $800 for only the audit. Uh, yeah, so I mean, look, $800, you might think it's a little bit, you might think it's a lot. In, in, in truth, it's about average. Um, I could charge more for my audits, but the reason why I don't is because people pay me for them because you know I only it only takes me a couple hours to do them. So it's still like $400 an hour. And doing the actual audit is just a way to bring people in to sell them the service. Because after they get the audit, then I sell them you know, $2,000 to $3,000 a month. It ends up being a, uh, you know, a gateway to a $10,000 client um, lifetime value, if not more. Um, as well as the case study and all the extra stuff I get from it. So for me, $800 is a no-brainer. Or some of you guys might think, you know, I would rather charge a lot more, but that's up to you. So these are all the pages in general that are getting um, views, not just off of Google. We got all these paginated pages. We got you know these Facebook pages. We got these dash two pages. But overall, we got about 50 pages showing up. Uh, most of it's junk. So let's go in here and make some suggestions based off that. We do have sort of a categorized URL structure. Let's go see what their services look like. I just, I just want to make sure that 
they have some sort of categorization. So yeah, they got services, then um, AWS migration. The better way to do this though is to do like, you know, whatever their actual services are. Like let's say it's like computer services or IT services. That, that way you get the extra sort of relevancy. But it's categorized. Um, I don't see any uncategorized pages. The way you check for those is you just do site colon name of website and you do uncategorized. And it looks like we don't. Um, I just put the first part of that. Uh, 404 pages that get traffic. Um, I didn't see any 404 pages that are getting traffic. It looks like all the pages that are getting traffic are um, are there. They're all fine. Um, doesn't look like any of them are 404ing. Um, but uh, 404 pages do exist that we should 410. Uh, we don't have any 302s. Um, we want to add an extra thing in here and say that um, in the notes up here, we're going to say that the uh, URLs um, are weirdly duplicated with uh, separate numbers like dash two, like services dash two, and then also, um, you know, the long and longer than three to five words. So each URL you use, you should only have it to be like three to five words per file path, meaning it should be like, you know, computer dash services or expert dash roundup service. But as soon as you start doing like, you know, four SEO pros over uh, 20 in Miami, like you don't want to have huge URLs like that. You only want them to be about three to four, three to five words per file path. Um, all right, so back in here, we got Google Search Console. So are multiple keywords competing for the same page? I didn't see it, but all the way, the way you look to see if um, pages are competing for the same keywords is if you click into one of the pages, go to queries, find one of the keywords you wanna look for, like Microsoft Exchange Benefits, uh, and you're gonna see which pages are showing up for those. So we'll go to pages, just this page. Um, best way to do this is just to go to queries and look at your top queries. So let's look at green computing, click on that, go to pages. Only one page is showing up for that. Good. So generally when you see things competing, if you see multiple pages showing up for this, you keep checking like this. It's usually because um, there's duplicate content issues or they keep or they created content that should be combined into one page. So this is kind of where we check for the duplicate content. Now I'm going to show you guys some more free tools. Uh, you can go to uh, grab the URL from the website and what you're going to do is you're going to use two tools. We're going to go grab the URL, control shift N, we're going to do SiteLiner and then we're going to do Copyscape. So SiteLiner checks to see if you have any content that's internally duplicated on your website. So if you know your home page is also also has the same content as you know one of your service pages. You don't want that. You want everything to be as unique as possible. So I'm going to put this URL in here, press go. And we'll do the same thing with Copyscape. Same thing, boom. Oops, I just copied it by accident. Let me grab the URL again. By the way, how many of you guys are in university and are gonna see me at three o'clock today? We're doing our live university training on Zoom today um, for the uh, local SEO university. And um, hopefully most of you guys have your homework done. Basically we're doing grades, we're doing homework. There's over 70 people in it already. And um, a lot of you are doing very well. We're, at, we're actually looking at everybody's websites today. Um, if you're not in this, you know, this is a really good place to be. Um, you can still get the replays and everything, um, but uh, it's a uh, it's basically a class that gives you grades. It shows you how to you know rank your first website. We have got we have a bunch of people making their first websites right now. It's really exciting, honestly, and uh, you get to join a live classroom environment. It's a lot of fun. Justin's in there. What's up, Marcos? Colin's in there. Sweet, Cal Abundant. What's up? All right, so we got the duplicate content externally. Looks like we have. Um, a match let's see what it is so about a 23 percent match on LinkedIn so that's not a big deal really or whatever that website is it didn't really look like it had a lot of duplicate content so I think we're good externally now the internal duplicate content we're gonna click on here and it looks like some pages have about a 47 percent match so we click into that 
we'll see that all of the things highlighted is duplicated also on the services page, which is really, really bad. So we got a lot of duplicates here um, on these different services. And you don't want to see that because it's going to make your pages rank a lot worse. So what we're going to do is we're going to go tell them, hey, look, you got a lot of pages that are duplicated. So are multiple keywords competing for the same page? No, but we do have duplicate content. Um, do we have the correct URL? Yes, index and search console. We don't have the sitemap yet. Um, let's go see if there's any manual penalties on this site. I don't believe there are. Um, basically, manual penalties means that Google found something wrong with your website and they manually penalized it with one of their teams, which they didn't. We got the correct Google uh, Analytics URL in there. Let's just double check on that. So we'll go here. And to find it, we just go to Admin, Property Settings. There it is. It's www and it's the HTTPS version. Great. Um, now, what we also want to look at is we want to see if there's any goals being tracked because if they don't have conversions set up, we got a problem. We don't know how much money they're making. It looks like they have conversions set up. They got the contact us. Let's go see. It's okay. Forward slash thanks. Now, let's see if their contact us page actually redirects. So we'll go here. We'll put in our information. We're going to put in our phone number. And we're going to put a. Uh, this is just a test. Please ignore. Submit. Doing the homework now. There's only an hour left. Can't believe this. I'm just kidding. It's all good. Homework doesn't take too long. Okay, so it did not read. Oh. Uh, was a long redirect, but it did it. Let's see if the conversion fired in here. So we'll do real time overview events. And I'm not seeing any. Let's see if the conversions. Oh, there it is. Cool. And then I'm assuming call tracking works. If we want to check that, all we got to do is grab the phone number, like so. And we're going to put it into Skype, give it a call. Natology, Dan speaking. Hey, Dan. Um, just testing to see if the conversion tracking works correctly on the site. I'm just working on the site right now. For? For Netology. Netology. Uh, uh, what, what, uh, what is this about? Uh, what's this in regards to? I'm uh, I'm working on the website right now for uh, Vincent and Preston. and. Uh, oh. Yeah. I, oh, okay. And the only reason I'm dragging this out is because I actually, in order for the conversion to fire, sometimes it takes a couple seconds for the phone call to okay. register. But I think we okay. should be good at this point. Okay, perfect. Thanks, man. Yep. Bye. Right. Bye. So I don't see a conversion firing here. We got the contact us, but we didn't get the phone call. It's funny when you do that. People are always so confused when you call their line. I've done this a couple times now um, live, and people are always like, oh, Interesting. <laughs> so anyways, uh, yeah, we don't have a conversion firing. We got two goal hits, which means the red, we have two analytics codes on the website, so that's bad. Um, but I'm not seeing any phone call registers, so it doesn't look like the call tracking set up correctly. Um, so we're going to say uh, contact works, but call tracking doesn't. I left the homework at Target, now it's gone. You guys can't give me excuses. Somebody said their dog ate their homework and this is an online class. <laughs> Did you guys print it out? All right, goal set up, uh, yes. But the call tracking for whatever reason isn't working, we gotta figure out why. Schema markup, all right, schema markup's really easy. And then another, you can use another free tool for this. It's super simple to use free tools to do audits without needing to spend any money. So you're gonna do Control Shift N again. I don't know why I do it in a private browser. I just like to make sure nothing's affecting our searches. I'm going to do structured data testing tool for looking at schema markup. Plug it in, enter URL, run a test. What software do you use to show the page plus yourself in that way? It's called open broadcasting software. And I actually did a, a tutorial on my channel. If you look up my layout, um, you'll see it. Actually, no, sorry. If you guys want to learn how to make a YouTube channel like mine, I, uh, part of my bundle 
if you guys are in the bundle. It's the 200K SEO business, I think. We'll actually show you guys how I set up my videos, how I record, how I grew my YouTube channel, all my secrets around that. And if you guys want to see everything that's in the bundle, by the way, it's in uh, chasewriter.teachable.com. I will be transferring everything over to uh, uh, my website very soon, but this is where everything is for the moment. So if you're seeing this later, it might be on my website. But yeah, this 200K SEO business right here, um, there's a part in here that shows you how to set up your videos. And um, it's pretty good. It shows you exactly what video, what, what camera software I use. It shows you like everything that I have, my mic, so on and so on. Uh, don't you have to click it from the site for the conversion to track? I did. I, uh, no, actually, no. That's on click tracking. That's different. Um, in order for call tracking to work, it should dynamically, um, the number should dynamically change based on the JavaScript you put in the site. And if you guys don't know how to do that, I also have a tutorial for that on YouTube if you look up offline conversion tracking, Chase Reiner. So, anyways, we got web page and we got organization. That's pretty much good to go. I mean, uh, organization markup isn't set up correctly. There's only just name. Uh, we want to put all their social data, all their social profiles, that kind of thing. So um, we're going to say, no, that's not good. Um, open graph data, we're going to go check it on Facebook and see how they're doing there. Sorry, my nose is really itchy right now. I don't know why. So we're going to grab the URL. By the way, let me know in chat, how did you guys end up finding me? Like, what And how long ago? Because I'm curious to know how many of you guys um, found me recently versus... Um, how long you've, have, have you actually been watching? Okay, the open graph image property is not explicitly provided. This is what's actually in the post OG title. We just don't have a image really specified. It looks like we maybe do, but they just pulled it automatically. So open graph data is not completely set up yet. Local business markup we don't need. Let's go check out if the blog's marked up. There it is. We're going to copy the blog, bring it up to the structured data, data testing tool. You found me through Ron Marino. Awesome. Waldo told, Waldo told you where I was. How did you find him? Okay, organization markups on every page. That's not good. We don't have blog markup. I'm going to make a note. It should only be on the home page. Fourteen days back, and you can't stop watching. Nice. Completely by accident, about three weeks ago, I've been searching for something and found one of your videos on Facebook. Oh, nice on Facebook. Been following since Josh Pashinsky got all antsy. <laughs> Years ago, I subscribed. Popped up on YouTube today. Nice. I don't. I don't think I have. Corona, I just have a really itchy nose. Sometimes it happens. All right, bread comes markup. We don't really need um, news article markup. We don't really need event markup. We don't need schema errors. It's just this one right here. I'll just put that down there. All right, plugins we don't really know, so we're just going to put Z's on all of them for now until we find out. Google My Business optimization. Let's go check out the Google My Business. We'll just grab their name. Okay, so they got 12 Google reviews. They're not really doing review generation. They're not responding to the reviews, what they should be. They aren't putting pictures, I don't believe, of the location or the services. These are just kind of stock photos. They have pictures of the team, which is good. Uh, but yeah, kind of not really optimizing well. Uh, technical service. So if they're trying to rank for anything locally, they're probably not going to do very well. So we'll do physical address, good. That's a plus. Service location, no. Correct hours, I believe so. Multiple categories, I don't think they are. Um, but I think it could be okay. Responding reviews, no. Um, keyword and stuff to title tag, no. Using post capability, no. Answering questions, they're not getting any. Using promotions, um, no, but it's fine. Continually posting content, uh, all the images need to be done. They have a couple of the team, we'll just say yes on that. Will you be posting the live stream once it's done? Yes, of course. I will keep it around for you guys. Since the garage days, welcome Christian. Thanks for being around for so long. 
All right, so citations local only. Let's check out the citations. Now, cita uh, White Spark's a little bit different these days. It's a little bit, the layout's different. I don't know if I like it, but we'll see if we can figure out the citations. So we'll go to your account. And again, this is another free tool. We're gonna launch the free citation finder. We'll do new campaign. We're gonna get all their info. <clears throat> Netology LLC. You just wanna take whatever's from the GMB or the Google My Business. We'll just put the two same in there. Let's get the phone number here. We're gonna add keywords. Uh, I believe, let's just go into here and see what they're already ranking for. We'll go to overview, sorry, performance. And we're gonna see the keywords. So we've got green computing, IT support packages, cloud computing, Microsoft Exchange benefits. Uh, okay, benefits of Exchange server. Um, let's just do cloud computing. Where did White Spark go? Is that White Spark? Okay, they changed their fav icon too, and their brand your uh, brand. I don't like when people change all that stuff. Okay, uh, and then the area is Pennsylvania. Where? Tinicum Township. That's a location. Yes, it is. All right, we'll create the campaign. I guess we could have put more keywords. I don't really know. This is such a weird new layout. What even is this? Is this a bird walking around backwards? Oh. What am I? Why is this their low? <laughs> okay. White Spark got weird. <laughs> so while we wait for that, we're gonna look at the page speed. So we already know the page speed's completely screwed. So we're just gonna, whoops, put Z's on everything here. That needs to be one of the first priorities. Web design is mobile friendly, I believe. Um, if you want to chat, test, just do uh, Google mobile tester, mobile friendly test. Christian just got <laughs> muted for saying bird flu for some reason. My moderation bot's really weird. Copy this, put it in here. Will this be up on YouTube afterwards? Yes, but only if you leave a like. If I get, if I get, will this be up on YouTube? If I get 100 likes on this video, I'll leave it up. Right now we're at 47. So it's up to you guys to make it happen. I believe in all of you. Oh, we're at 50 while we're waiting. We are at 57 now, holy cow, you guys are killing it. You guys are just smacking that like button. You guys are going into different accounts right now and just hitting all of these and then just doing likes, aren't you? The, the majority of these items have neg negligible, ah, neglig, I can't say that word, negligible, negligible, there we go, we got it, negligible, impact on the bottom line. Yes, but here's the thing. That's not true. <laughs> if you look at one of the recent people that we did this with, ClicksGeek, they actually got a, what was it? A 100% boost in, they went from, no, 200% boost in conversions. They went from 600 conversions to 1,200 and something in the last month. And if you wanna watch that happen, go to my YouTube tutorials, you'll see it happen. Page is not mobile friendly. Holy cow. Well. Could have fooled me. That's bad. Okay, site search. We don't have that set up. We don't really need it. We don't have set it up, right? I don't think we do. Uh, and by the way, for those of you who are like, oh, well, phase one so easy. It doesn't really have a lot to do. So here's the thing. You have a house, right? Well, no, most people don't have a house, but let's say you owned a house or let's say you wanted to buy a house. This is phase one. It's the very, it's the foundation of your house. It's, it's the thing that everybody, everything stands on. Now, when you're building traffic, you're actually working on, sorry, that's a really bad house. It looks like a sandwich. But when you're building traffic to a site and you're optimizing inv individual pages or adding, so this is up here is adding new pages. Optimizing individual pages is the middle of your house. And then your foundation is all the things that affect your entire, everything up here. 
Because here at the bottom, you're looking at page speed, you're looking at indexation, you're looking at mobile friendly. Guess what? If you started optimizing all these pages and changing the URLs and adding new content and trying to rank them and build links and whatever you're doing, and you're, you have no mobile friendly, your page speed's at 22 seconds, everything that's gonna be affecting your foundation, all this stuff that you're working on doesn't matter. So phase one is very important. If you don't do phase one, then you can't do phase two, then you can't do phase three, then you can't do phase four. You can't even see phase four, but. Anyways, uh, okay, so breadcrumbs, boom, we're just gonna, I think we're good on everything else, pretty much. Cool. So that's phase one. How many of you guys know what phase two is? Can you explain it? 32 citations, that's all they got? I gotta build some more from. So how many of you guys can explain to me what we're doing here on phase two? So phase one's the easy part. So if any of you guys were confused on phase one, get ready to be extremely confused, but no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's actually not that hard. So in phase two, all we're doing, so this is all the stuff that, you know, if you are doing a paid audit, it is helpful to have all this laid out. Um, or if you're doing a, you know, uh, if you're using paid tools, it is helpful to have this, but it's not necessary. I'm gonna show you why. So I'm gonna show you how to do the phase two for free because a lot of people don't know how to do this for free because there's so many tools that you need. So what you're doing here is you're taking all your URLs from Search Console. We're gonna export them here. Actually, I think we can actually export from analytics. Let's see if we can go into acquisition, all traffic, source medium. Ah. Behavior, site content, all pages, that's what I wanted. And let's see if we can download these pages. I think we can, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, which I have been known to be mistaken before. Export, there we go, press that. We're gonna download as Google Sheets and bada bing, bada boom, we got all of our data. Boom, we got it, okay, cool. So what this is gonna show us um, we got page views, unique page views, average time on page, entrances, bounce rate, exit, uh, page value. Now, we actually want landing pages because we actually want to see the the user metrics. So we're going to do this again. We're going to do uh, we're going to do export Google Sheets, import the data. Now we got the top pages. Now what we got to do this one more time because I didn't put all the pages in here. Let's get all 22. And now we're gonna have all the data for these pages that we can kind of use as a way to see, oh, what's going on with these pages. So here we go. Now we got landing page, we got the bounce rates, the average session duration, so on and so on. So if I create a new tab and I just put these in here, and let me zoom in so you guys can see this a little bit better. So we got the landing page. These are all the different pages on the website. Now, one of the things you guys have to realize is that if there isn't a whole lot of data for page for phase two, meaning that there's not like a lot of pages ranking. I'll show you a better example of what phase two is, is gonna help you, is how you can really get an idea of phase two. Um, if we go to a website that already has a lot of traffic, like let's go to, um, let's go to Google Analytics, and we're gonna go to like my website, Chase Runner. Afterwards, yes. Whoops, go here. What is phase four about? It's about building authority with like social automation and opt-ins, that kind of thing. It's more about like conversion optimization. So we'll go to behavior, go to site content again, same sort of place, landing pages. We're gonna go by the last month. And I'm gonna go ahead and export all these all these pages. We'll do the same thing. Now you're gonna get a lot more data here because you, you basically have, whoops, actually let me get more pages. You basically have a ton of different pages ranking for keywords um, that are actually getting traffic and actually getting in conversions. Where this other one, you can see there's not many conversions coming in. So here we, you can see we have like 45 sessions, zero conversions. Conversions not even really working very well, the conversion tracking. The bounce rates aren't working because there's multiple analytics codes. It's just all over the place. Where here in my website, you can see we have you know, the conversion rates, we have the bounce rates, we have a bunch of pages with traffic. So then when we wanna go optimize it, very easy to do because we have all this data, and we can start mapping our keywords to these pages, the keywords we wanna rank. 
we're here, we're not really gonna be probably ranking for anything because we don't really have any traffic. Now I'll show you what it kind of looks like when you do the phase two. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna paste one column to the right and you're gonna type keyword. You're gonna see what these pages are actually showing up for. So we'll go home page, go into here. We're gonna go to uh, query, or sorry, uh, page. Put the page in here and we'll see what the home page is ranking for by going to queries. You can see green computing, Netology, IT support packages. So we'll just do green computing for now. So we'll take all these metrics. We got the clicks, the click through, the impressions, the click through rate, and the hours position, 32.1. Now let's actually take the most recent position by doing the last seven days. We get the most current data for their hours position. And here we got hours position 45. So that's pretty, that's not a good position. So what we can do is we can put these other data points in here as well. So we'll insert one to the right, whoops. Insert one to the right, insert one to the right, insert one to the right. I did tell you it would be a little bit more confusing, but once you get it, it's pretty easy. So all of the things we're looking at here is we got the query, the clicks, the impressions, the click-through rate, and the average position. Now if we put these all together, you get kind of a kind of an easier way to look at all your stuff because now you have everything that you could ever want for that keyword. You can see the amount of conversions, you can see the amount of bounces, you can see the high the click-through rates, you can see the average positions, you can see the sessions, you can see the new sessions. You get everything you could pretty much ever want by mapping out all your stuff when you're doing your phase two audit. But again, you're not gonna get a very good phase two audit because a lot of the stuff that they got going on in here is not a lot of data, so you're not gonna be able to see a whole lot. So we could see here, we got the homepage ranking for green computing with one click in the last seven days, 48 impressions, a 2% click through rate, average position 45, sessions 45, new sessions 84%, uh, new users 38, average, blah, 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 blah. Now let's go to the next one. I'm only gonna do like two because they don't have a lot of data here. We're gonna put the page in here, same sort of deal. So a lot of what you're gonna be doing is when you're working with these clients, you're not gonna be doing a lot of benchmarking your phase two stuff because they don't aren't gonna have a lot of data. Look, look, we got Microsoft Exchange features. This will be our next one. What you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be doing a lot of competitor research. So boom, we got the next one here. Uh, so for competitor research, what you're gonna do is you wanna find people that are ranking for similar things like you know Microsoft Exchange features, green computing. Um, let's try, yeah, let's just try that for now. and see who's showing up. White label IT solutions, go into here. Now, one thing that you guys are gonna need to do for this is you're gonna need to use a tool to see what keywords these people are ranking for. So I can use something like SEMrush, which again, if you wanna use it for free, I can give you a month for free. Um, this is the link. It's I haven't released this to anybody yet, but it's, it's uh, semrush.com forward slash partner forward slash Chase Reiner. If you sign up for this uh, SEMrush through this, by the way, you'll also get a, uh, you'll be giving me a kickback. Um, I think as long as you're signing up through here, you get, uh, I think you also get a discount or something. But sign up through here, you can make the account. Um, it's 30 days for free. Um, or you can use this promo code in here. Um, so you, you pay $0, you can use this for an entire month for free. Um, you can make money off your audit. You can cancel before it even hits if that is what you want to do if you don't want to spend any money. So I'll put that link in chat for you guys and actually ask this for you guys uh, because a uh, lot of uh, you know my tutorials, again, I try to make for free so you guys don't have to spend money if you're starting out. So we'll go to SEMrush. We'll take one of these competitors. We'll plug them in. I'm trying to find where the frick the frack went. I don't even remember what I was doing. Oh, yeah, green computing. How does SEMrush compare to Mangles or Ahrefs, Katie? They're all, they're all different. I mean, I try not to look as much the KD as I look at the actual things ranking. And I'll show you how that how that works in a little bit. So we'll press search, and in here we got 927 traffic going to that website. We can go and see what it's ranking for. And we got a bunch of different ideas. So what green computing, what is green computing? So this could be a blog post, um, green computing definition. So these are already keywords that we can use. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and download these and we're gonna take all of our competitors, we're gonna send them over, we're gonna figure out which keywords work the best for them. What, are they, what, what makes sense for them? So we'll press Excel. So we got the first one, we got white label IT solutions. Let's go to the next people. over here 
Um, search data center, this looks a little bit more like Wikipedia. We wanna find people that sell services. This is a school. Um, let's see if we can find people that sell uh, IT solutions, I guess it would be. Um, what are some, let's see if we can find some competitors. So one of the things you can do in SEMrush is you can actually take the URL of your own and you can see which keywords are similar to the ones you're ranking for and it'll actually find competitors for you. So what do we do if there's not enough data for phase two? Again, this is what you do. You go into straight into phase three, which is keyword research, and you start finding uh, similar keywords that you wanna rank for um, to build out their content because a lot of what they need to do now is after they fix their foundation is they need to start building content because they don't really have a middle level. So again, if you look at the house that I was talking about before, when you do phase one, here's the foundation, right? This is everything that you need to fix before going to the next part of the uh, website, which is the phase two, right? Going in and actually optimizing the actual pages that are already on there. Now, if they don't really have anything ranking in the first place, um, there isn't really any content there, there isn't really any data, then there isn't really much you can optimize for what's currently there. So you actually go to the top level. Hey, thanks for the donation, Cow Abundant. $10 donation just came in from Cow Abundant. Thank you. So instead what you do is instead of working on the existing content because you don't really have it, is you just go straight to the top level, which is actually gonna be this level, and you start doing the keyword research and you figure out, okay, what are the things that we need to add to the foundation in order to grow this site now that the foundation is strong? So that's where you go in and do keyword research and you start figuring out what you wanna build as your content. So if we go to gap analysis, I believe, we go to keyword gap, um, let's see if we can pull some competitors that will already be tracked in here. Um, can we find any that are in here? Select keyword type for each domain. Um, I don't see any way to actually pull anybody. Um, let's see if we have a, we don't want keyword magic, we don't want any of that stuff. I'm pretty sure there should be some sort of way to look at your competition. And it might actually be that you have to add the website as a project first uh, in SEMrush. So I think if we go here, we put the domain in here. I think it then finds the competitors. We add domain and then you can also obviously um, in here, um, or maybe not so obviously, you can actually put the, uh, the analytics and hook everything up there as well. So maybe if we go into it now, we can see the competitors. So we click on it. Um, up to three competitors, okay, let's see. So it just automatically adds these people in here, cool. Let's just put these in here and see what happens. Looks like it actually pulled a bunch of people. Um, so let's actually compare ourselves to them. You can search for the keyword uh, and then you can use the top competitors for the keyword query, got it. Okay, so um, we're actually doing pretty well on our authority. Looks like these people have a little bit more keywords than us. Let's go see what they got. So we'll click on them. And pretty much all I'm doing here is I'm just exporting a bunch of keywords. I'm gonna send them over and see what, you know, keywords look good for the, for our, the people we're working with. So I'm gonna download these as well. We're just gonna go to export. We're gonna do all of them. I actually just want a CSV. I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, we'll get a couple more. And I'm gonna just send them all over. Now, again, this is pretty much most of the audit. The other part of the audit is I'm gonna have to go and talk to them and you know, tell them everything that's going on and you know, show them what's, you know, what we have to do um, to kind of replicate what these other people are doing, show them the keywords and go over those keywords with them. But um, you know, the audit is not just, uh, you know, it's not just, the actual audit, like it's not just the template. It's actually going in and, and you have to kind of cater what you're doing based on sort of what you're seeing for your um, for your audit and actually talk to them and say, hey, look, you know, we got some duplicate content issues. One thing I'm also gonna go do in phase two here is I'm gonna go and mark all the internal duplicate content for these pages, show them how much they have. We have to go and find the content writers for them. We have to do so much stuff. So, you know, a lot of the time when you're working with new clients, you're gonna actually see that a lot of what they have going on is just foundation issues and content issues. When you work on bigger sites like Ed at ClicksGeek, you'll see that there's a lot more to do with phase two and whatnot. Um, we're in here, there's a lot less. So um, 
that's pretty much it for today, guys. Again, if you want to learn how to do this stuff, um, all you have to do is go to the uh, SEO bundle or go to the new local SEO university and get the university replays with homework and the bundle all together for 797. I'll put the link in here so you guys can go check it out. But um, that's it for today, guys. And thank you all for joining me. Again, make sure to leave a like if you haven't done so already. Until we sell next time, happy SEOing. We'll see you later. Bye.